My name is Brandon Howley. I am Chuck Howley's grandson, owner of Happy Hollow Beef and managing partner of Happy Hollow Ranch. Growing up with Chuck was like living every day with your superhero. It was an amazing experience and, you know, learning from my grandfather was trial by fire. You know, he wasn't a man of many words and he wasn't the one to realistically communicate how he wanted exactly something done. You know, he, he was the type that would have you go do something, fail, and then, you know, he would teach you about that failure and, and how you can kind of pivot and make it better. Before the ranch, I was in the military as a Navy corpsman. Every day, it's very much like the military. It's never the same flavor twice. My kids absolutely love this stuff. My littlest, Lakeland, she wakes up every single morning and jumps on YouTube and watches a loop of cows just grazing and mooing on our TV when she's eating breakfast. And Nellie Mae, I mean, she's my little ride or die. She's been coming out here with me to the roundups and, you know, pushing cattle on the ATVs or, you know, in the back of the truck, feeding them. I mean, she's been in it since day one. They are in love with it. My wife, you know, she's from LA County, so it's a little bit of a culture shock for her at first, I think. But the more that she got in into this, and the more that she kind of participated in the events directing side of, of the business, I think she found her niche and where she felt comfortable in participating with the ranch. I think that, you know, her idea of us running a ranch was her jumping on a horse and going out and pushing cows with us and doing that kind of stuff. And that really wasn't her cup of tea at the time. I love to say that my husband even cares about the dung beetle population because he truly does. We also make jokes that he's the flip-flop cowboy, but he is in the dirt, barefoot, Essentially what our business is at its foundation is grass-fed and finished cow-calf stalker backgrounder. The first thing that we, we knew to do was go to the restaurants and you know start shopping chefs is what we called it. You know once we start, sort of established that dynamic where we had really good rapport with a lot of these chefs and we were you know presenting the beef in a very nice and beautiful way, we were able to then upshift that into our partnership with the Dallas Independent School District and what they were trying to do is that they have a sustainability initiative that they want to accomplish by year 2030. Because I have some personal beliefs and personal ambitions that I really want to accentuate with my growth of the business. Grass-fed beef, I guess the main difference is that we don't have the, the luxury of the extra inputs to kind of compensate for, I'll call it unnatural growth or uh, forced growth. When you talk about you know, store-bought differences, there's also a taste factor. So if you were to eat like a uh, grass-fed foraging animal, as opposed to something that's been very you know, mono, because I mean, I had a little trouble myself when we switched over to this leaner product, I'll call it, and trying to find out that magical kind of recipe or temperature and all that stuff. And we've kind of locked it down and got it pretty, down pretty pat. So I go in there and, I'll show even some of these chefs like, hey man, you know, I tried it this way, but you know, if you could cook it just five minutes less. From day one, mamas are birthing the calves and we're going out there and patrolling, you know, every other day or every day to see which new calves are on the ground. And we'll go out there, we'll tag them, we'll record a birthday and let them drink all mama's milk for about five or six months. So we'll bring them all up to the red barn over there with the squeeze chute. You know, we'll run the moms through, give them a health and wellness check, and then we'll just kind of give them their annual checkup, essentially, and then turn them back out into the pasture. And then the babies will be up next. And the babies, essentially, what we have to do is rope them because they're gonna go through their first ever, like, processing for the ranch. And this is where we take account of everything that we have on the ranch. So the babies will be branded with our ranch logo, or with our ranch brand. They'll get a, year marker on the front left shoulder as well so it'll tell us what year they were born. Plastic tag to give them a number and then they'll have a clipped ear for heifer or bull and then that's pretty much it and then get two two vaccines. So everything goes back out with mom so we'll separate the moms and the babies but they'll be able to see each other still and they can kind of like moo and caw at each other and do all that stuff and then you know after a day or two they kind of just quiet down and you know they calm down. Once they've calmed down 
We then go in with the calves and then we separate the girls from the boys, so the heifers from the steers. And then we'll make a determination on whether or not they're gonna be put back into our breeding stock program or if we're gonna go ahead and, and send them on down the line to a contract buyer or somebody like that. We'll take them to the USDA, we'll create a cut sheet that gives them exact specs as to what we're looking for out of each cut get that processed, it's a 21 day dry aging process and then they cut it down and then vacuum seal it. And then once they vacuum sealed it, they pack it all up into the reefer truck and then bring it over to our storefront. And that's kind of where our 10,000 pound freezer is that we keep all of our orders that get dropped off. And then we just self-distribute. 